Hello friends, we are not employed by a fine company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do invert a binary tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to work at who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Uber, Goldman Sachs and LinkedIn. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is the lead code easy problem and also very well like problem on lead code. Basically we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to invert the tree and return its root back. So let's try to understand this with a couple of examples. First of all we will take this example. So over here we are given a tree that looks like this where this 2, uh, 1 and 3 are part of the tree where 1 is the left child and 3 is the right child. So if we invert this tree we will get an answer that looks like this where 2 remains the root because it is the root node but this 3 that was originally the right child will become the left child and this one that was originally the left child will become right child and this is what we need to return. Let's take a little bit more complicated example. So over here we are given the root to be 4. Now we are given that the left child and right child of this 4 is actually 2 and 7 and further down we are given more left child and right child for this 2 and 7 as well. Now if we invert those all of them we will actually get a result that looks like this where 4 remains the common. Uh, this 7 that was originally the right child will become the left child and this 2 that was originally the left child will become right child and same thing will happen for these leaf nodes as well and this is the answer we need to return in the answer. This is what the problem is asking us to do. Let's see that what would be the different approaches to solve this problem. Before we come up with the optimal solution, let's understand a very important concept. Suppose this is one of the kind of a binary tree we are given and we need to invert this tree. Well, if we see over here, we are given a root node. Then again, we are given some left child and we are given a right child. Now further down for this left child and right child, they also have the children of their own and they also form a bigger binary tree. So at any given moment, suppose we are given this root node, we are given this left child and we are given this right child. So if we want to invert this tree, all we have to do is whatever this right child is and whatever this left child is, if we just swap them or if we invert them, basically we are at least done with this root level and with this left child and right child level. Now again, if we further break down that, uh, suppose this is the left child, now we are treating this left child as a root. So suppose now this is the root and this is the left child and this is the right child for this root. So again, if we want to invert them, what we can do is we can take whatever the left subtree and right subtree is. So in this case, for this root, the left subtree is going to be this, the right subtree is going to be this. If we swap them, uh, essentially we have taken care of up until this level for this uh, inverting part and same way we can keep on repeating the process. So now this becomes our root. Again, we flip these two values and even for this level, we have taken care of inverting the binary tree. So this is what exactly I'm suggesting us to do in order to solve this problem that we we starts breaking this given input into bunch of uh, smaller inputs and start inverting binary tree in that manner so the idea is that for every single time uh, we will have a root node we will swap its left and right child then again for if there exist any left or right child we will repeat the same process and keep on swapping those values which means that we are actually doing uh, doing the changes recursively recursively we can actually solve this problem pretty efficiently uh, let me quickly show you how suppose this is the input we are given and we are trying to invert this binary tree recursively so what we are going to do is suppose we will take initially this as the root node and for this root node we actually have a left child and we actually have a right child so what we are going to do is we are going to swap its values and we are going to swap the entire left subtree and entire right subtree then at any given moment uh, as long as we have some nodes we are going to keep on treating them as different root nodes and then we will keep on flipping their values or their children's values and at the end we should have a completely inverted binary tree so let's see that in action so first of all this is the root node and this is the left and right subtree so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to swap the values so we were we will have a tree that looks like this okay so so far treating this as root tree we have actually swapped these left subtree and right subtree and we will get a tree that looks like this where you can see that this value 3 and 2 they are actually inverted but their subsequent children values they are not inverted and we will still have to repeat the same process so let's see that in action so now again uh, what we are going to do is we are going to treat this 3 to be root child and we are going to repeat the same process with the 6 and 7 so if we invert them we will get a tree that looks like this 
Now we are going to treat the 7 to be the root node. If we treat the 7 to be the root node, actually it does not have any children, which means we don't need to flip any more values. Now again, we will treat the 6 to be the root node. If we treat the 6 to be the root node, again, it does not have any more children. So we can skip that. Now we will treat this 2 to be the root node. So if we treat this 2 to be the root node, it has children. So we will have to swap their values and we will get a value that looks like this. And we would have taken care of uh, both of them. Now again, this 5 and 4 does not have any children, which means we can't do anything about it. And then in the end, this is going to be the answer we need to return. So we can simply return the root value. And basically, we would have inverted the entire tree uh, recursively. So that is the approach we can use as an optimal solution. There is also one more way to iteratively approach this problem. But the thing is, I believe that for tree kind of problems, the, the recursive approach is better than the iterative approach. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the iterative approach as well and I can make a separate video on that if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big O of n where n is the number of nodes that are present inside any given tree because we will have to iterate over every single tree to invert them now if we see the space complexity well at any given moment because of the recursive function we might have to uh, store bunch of different node values and that would depend on the height of the tree so basically the space complexity is going to be big O of h where h is the given height of any binary tree. So because we are going to solve this problem recursively, first let's uh, create the terminating condition that if the given root is actually null, we can return. If the given root is not null, we are going to make the recursive call for right and left uh, val values. So for right tree, we are going to make the recursive call to the same function with the right child. Same thing we are going to do for the left subtree. After that, we are going to replace the values of left and right subtree. Uh, so now that should have taken care of all the cases and now we can simply return the root value. And that should be it. So let's try to run this code. Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our solution is actually pretty efficient. It's actually 100% faster than all the other solution. And that is because the runtime is actually 0 millisecond. I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you.